Hello Divas, Dudes and Dolls, I'm Kira Couture and welcome back to my comfy, cozy, and cutesy little review show, Very Slay, where we go over each and every main stage look on Drag Race España season four. This week was a very fun theme, I thought. I know Drag Race España, at least they did this in season two, they had sort of like a dark, creepy runway that pushed the queens outside of like the glamour aesthetic. So I particularly enjoyed that we got to see that again here. Now, that being said, the runway category for today was Historias para no dormir, which translates roughly to tales to keep you awake. And went for scary stories, things that haunt the queens, etc. So like always with this show, when we go into these looks, if I think it got the job done, but it didn't blow me away, we give it an okay. If I did find it would have kept me up at night because it's just so good of a look, we give it a slay. And if I just was conked right out and it lulled me off into slumber, we give it an A. And it's all in efforts to find my weekly slay of the day, my favorite look out of the episode. Whichever look takes that top spot will go up against our current ranked slay of the season, which is La Nina de Lantro's look from last week's episode from the Baroque Co theme. And I will illustrate whichever look ends up taking that top spot at the end of the season after we have crowned a new Spanish drag superstar. Sneak previews of that artwork will go to Patreon along with all the other artwork I'm working on. In addition, a condensed discussion post for last week's episode and this week for España is coming at the same time this video is coming out. So if you want to get my opinions on some of the talent show performances as well as the episode as a whole, for both of these, that stuff you can access for free. Now, let's get into these looks. So first up on the runway this week, we have Van Parashian, who is giving us this absolutely bodied down silhouette. I don't think necessarily that the lettering on the back of the cape was necessary for the look to read as well as it did. This look is really impressive on its own. It's really well embellished. The shading work on the rhinestoning, chef's kiss, perfect, just mwah. Um, I, I love the whole placement of everything on this. I have no faults with it. I think it is fantastic. It was a great way to start this runway off and it really set the precedent for what was to come. I thought everything about this was just phenomenal. And that's not just because I think everything she does is great. I just really enjoyed this look a lot. It's one of my favorites out of the whole episode. This is a slay. Next up we have Didi Dubois who's giving us this sleep paralysis demon moment. Now. I think wearing this much black like this on the runway is a bit of a mistake because it does not read as anything other than like a blob. And there's some really cool textural work going on in like the headpiece and like the arms coming off the body and all of that, but you lose a lot of it because of how the runway is set up and how the lighting for the show is done. I do agree with the critiques that she should have had a black tight just so that way the sheer was the whole thing because her leg is so starkly a neutral color that it really sticks out like a sore thumb when you see it underneath the skirt. She could have also just made the skirt floor length and that would have rectified the problem like from the jump. For me, it's okay. Then up next, we have Le Coco who's giving us this bird into bird attacked woman moment. The silhouette for this first look being an Alexander McQueen recreation, I absolutely adore. It's one of my favorite Alexander McQueen looks of any collection, but she did it in a way that isn't just a direct rip on that look. Yes, it's the same silhouette. Yes, it's also a dress made out of feathers. She's got some good tweaks in that design that I think it still works on its own. The look underneath as well, I think is also really, really strong. I love all the ruffles in the skirt and just the placement of the shoulder cutouts and the sleeve length is really flattering on her. I love the hair, I love the makeup. This is probably my favorite look from her on the runway so far. So this is absolutely going to be a slay for me. Then up next we have Mariana Stars, and this is so far outside of her normal aesthetic that I was really gagged by it, honestly. What I wasn't gagged by was the fact that with where she applied the bald cap, she didn't carry the eyebrow back up over the bald cap. So she just has an eyebrow that disappears and then comes back, which I think is a huge, mistake and i think the silhouette is fine she looks like a creepy aged clown like she fits the vibe really really well however i think the silhouette's a little too large and it really swallows her up so for that reason alone i'm gonna give this look an okay and then we have maggie and i was raised that if you have nothing nice to say you say nothing at all so i'm going to say nay and just say that this look perfectly embodies my exact issue with Maggie is that Maggie's drag oftentimes feels like it's about being a hot guy. Also, the prosthetics are kind of shittily applied. Up next, we have Kelly. 
and I adored this. I love like a film reference moment. So her doing Tippi Hedren from the birds, I thought was genius for this. I thought was so smart. However, I don't really see how the two storylines related of the Tippi Hedren look and then her relating the second look to like a fear of being naked on stage and where she's like skinned. But the reveal into this was really cool and I really enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was really, really well done and well presented. I love also that like the bulging eye is positioned underneath the brim of the hat. So when she first walks out, unless she like would flip her head up at the right angle, you just wouldn't see it. I think the birds where they're placed on the gloves and the hat also really adds to the overall presentation. For me, this is a slay. I think it's her best look so far in the competition. Then up next, we have Miss Crystal, who's giving us this Count Orlock kind of Bella Lugosi-ish Dracula moment. That's a little nosferatu -y. I absolutely adore this. This is how you do like black on the runway and still make it work. The feet are crazy. The hands, the gloves are so cool. I love what the coat, like this brim, and how it goes up around her, what that does for the overall silhouette. It really creates this like really weird, almost inhuman sort of proportion. I think it's really successful. And I think it's the biggest departure that we've seen from like her typical aesthetic things that we've been getting out of her this season. I thought this was wonderful. I enjoyed it a lot. For me, it was a slay. And then we have Angelita de Perversa doing this Freddy Krueger moment. It's a mermaid gown, the tube dress, with glittery fabric in horizontal stripes. I don't like the color she picked. It's very Christmas green. I think it should have been like a darker green. The reveal of like the faces on the skirt underneath the, the little trumpet flare, I thought was kind of cool, but I think she should have kept the hat on because Oh, these prosthetics are so rough. And I get that like Freddy's a burn victim and his skin is all kind of charred and yucky looking, but this just looks bad. Like it just looks like bad prosthetics applied poorly. I'm gonna give her look an okay. Then we have Chloe V2 and I think Chloe's look, this is probably the one I was the most excited by on the runway because for me, even though the silhouette is a bodysuit, this aesthetic for her is so outside of what we've gotten to see. I was very here for it. I thought it was really cool. I love the spikes on the head. I love where the cutout is placed on the bodysuit. I love the shoes. I love the blood work and like the muscly bits of this. And I thought the presentation was really strong. This is for me, her best look so far in the competition. Aside from that really gorgeous gown we got to see in episode one. For me, it's a slay. And then we have La Nina Delantro who's giving us this Lilith moment. And for me, again, not the best applied prosthetic pieces, but I'm not mad at it. I do think that they like are decently done. Uh, they are a little large for her face in my opinion. The real star of this is this garment. It's perfectly distressed, it's perfectly aged, and what I enjoyed so much about her performance is that she soaked the dress before walking the runway so that way when she walked, the fabric would be heavy and it would drag in a very particular way. And that, dear viewers, is the mark of a storyteller. And if there's one thing she has proven herself very effective at doing across this season, it's being arguably the best storyteller on the runway. But the prosthetics and the hair are not great, so I'm gonna give this an okay. The gown's cool though. It's like almost there for me. Okie dokie, it's now time to pick my sleigh of the day, my favorite look out of the whole episode. It really comes down to three looks for me, and that's Van Parashian, Le Coco, and Miss Cristo. But I think I am going to give my sleigh of the day to Miss Cristo. I think this look is just so wackadoodle in the best way. I think the silhouette on the other two are so good, but a bit similar to things we've seen. Vampirashi, we know is gonna have great body and great polish to her drag. We know Lococo is gonna have these kind of more streamlined, simpler fashion aesthetics. Miss Cristo loves the reference, but she's not afraid to do something real weird with the silhouette. And I, for one, really appreciate that. Miss Cristo takes the cake this week, but does her look hold up against La Nina's from last week? And I have to say, I don't think it does. I think La Nina is going to hold on to that top spot at least for one week longer. And we will see you all next week to determine if she will hold that top spot for yet another week. Now, as always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all those lovely little things. I would greatly appreciate it. We are almost at 800 subscribers, which is wild. We're so close. And every hour we rack up for the watch hours helps as well. We just have 800 watch hours to go. And then we have 
our next metric or partner clear. Please keep watching. Please keep tuning in every week. I appreciate it all immensely. And don't forget y'all before you go out there today to stay kind, stay clear, and make sure that your day is very slay. Thank you.